Each week, more or less this year, I will be making a piece of mixed media artwork inspired by one or more of the books that I have on my arty bookshelf because yes, indeed, I do have a lot of art books. It's nice to see you today. You may have noticed that a few faces have crept into my series on my arty bookshelf lately. And just the other day, I came across this other portrait here it was a sample for a kids series called Art and Games. We played all kinds of games. Shape Bingo, this Dada game, 1,000 blank white cards, and of course my old favorite, The Exquisite Corpse. And this is my little sample that I made with mixed up drawings and mixed up words as well. They really amuse me. So this portrait was something that I call Rolla Picasso. Now I didn't make that up. It's something that you can find on the internet. It made me think of this children's book about Picasso's art. And there's a pretty typical Picasso painting. But did you also know that he painted like this when he was a teenager? <laughs> Picasso experimented with many different styles of art that were considered outlandish. When everybody else was doing photorealistic art, I often think that if he had continued to do that kind of photorealistic art, that would he have been as famous as he is now? And he this painting, Guernica, which was his response to war, when my daughter saw that, she said, Mummy, do not read that book. It is way too scary. And there's another one of his portraits there. So I paired this book with this little booklet that my friend Penelope made. See, I'm mentioning you by name again. Hi, Bruce. <laughs> and she asked a, a lot of different people to draw faces and she's put them together in this book here and you'll see very many different styles of faces. Some of them are really realistic, some of them are more abstract or cartoony or simple, but they're all recognizable as faces. And did you know that our brains have a specific area that's that's dedicated to recognizing faces from the time that we're very, very young. It's one of the first things that we can recognize is a face. There are the faces that I drew for her. Somehow I didn't get the memo that they were all supposed to be separated. So mine are all jammed together. And she's also got this section on faces drawn by different artists. So let's see what kind of face I come up with inspired by this sheet that I have. So I'm going to use this piece of paper that's left over from the paintings that I did the other day. And I'm going to use my dice here to guide my, my shape selections. And just for fun, I'm going to do my drawings with my right hand. You may have noticed that I'm left-handed, so my right hand is my non-dominant hand. Now, I do have to tell you that as a left-handed person, I'm a little bit more competent with my right hand than many right-handed people are with their left hand. It is just part of the way that my brain works. I can use both hands relatively effectively. I can also read backwards, mirror image writing, upside down, all of those things that right-handed people seem to struggle with. So let's see, what did I get there? Yeah, so I'm do, I'm working on my second eye. So I have to say that sometimes I get comments here about my stitching that, oh, you should do stitching with your right hand and you'll get more viewers. Well, does anybody ever say to right-handed people, oh, you should do things with your left hand? And now I got a six that time, but I don't really want to do that nose and it's my project. So if I don't want to do that nose, I'm not going to. I've chosen a different nose. I could even have done something completely different if I wanted to. But here we go. This is kind of fun. I'm enjoying this. It's kind of fun to see what I come up with. And the neat thing is, you know, even if you got the same dice rolls every time, you can interpret them differently. That one eye I did sideways. The next eye, which could have been a closed winking eye, I decided to make it a an eyebrow. You're the boss of your art. You decide to use it however you want.
And that butterfly shape there that I have there, I'm going to turn it into a bow and make it a little bit more detailed than it is in the picture there. So I can do whatever I want. Don't have to follow the rules at all. So this is kind of fun. I like the way this is turning out. And let's see, one more dice roll. And it's given me this shape, which is actually, I'll have to look up what part of speech it is. It's a bracket or braces. It's got some name. I don't know what it is. And those lines at the bottom there, they're making me think of a turtleneck sweater, a rib turtleneck sweater. So I'm going to add that on and give my face there some hair using the shapes that that are already there the paint underneath to guide the the shape of the hair there and I've added some more lines to the sweater part and then I decided that I'm going to repeat that those parallelish lines around the top there and now I've switched over to paint decided I want to kick up the contrast between the background and the foreground using the bluish purpley blue color that I have there already on the page. It's a strong contrast between orange and blue so it'll make my figure stand out when I make the background the complementary color. If you use a color wheel you, you'll know what that means and if you don't just don't worry about it. I picked a color that's very different from from the color in my figure. And I'm just splooching it on using the gouache paint that I've used before, which is like a thick watercolor paint that was used in the olden days for as a poster paint before, before the days off digital art. And you can still see the marks that were left over underneath there, but I've de-emphasized them. So they're less important. They've just become part of the background. Just part of a textured background. It's not going to be completely flat and one dimensional but it's also not going to be the thing that you're paying attention to. I'm just going to fill all of the, the whole background in and then not worry about it anymore. Now I'm using blue again to create some shadows on the face there. And I'm going to switch over to that bright orange to to liven up the foreground, to make the color more intense in some areas. But I'm going to leave the white. It'll read as a highlight or where the light is bouncing off the face. And a green turtleneck, why not? A green turtleneck and a green bow, sure, why not? And I think this piece is done. Once again, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now. And if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a comment or a like or consider subscribing to my channel.